with Michio Kaku, famed theoretical physicist. Wonderful to see you, Michio. Um, you look at those pictures there and you see Jeff Bezos. Everybody's happy that this was a success. Uh, of course, he, he is the most happy. It was an 11-minute flight, and I'm just wondering how long before you can do it or I can do it? Well, that may take a while, but there's a new vision emerging from this. The old vision of the 60s was beat the Russians, beat the Russians. Well, we beat the Russians and the wind went out of the sail for the moon program. But now because of these billionaires, there's a new vision emerging. First of all, the democratization of outer space. One day, not immediately, but one day mom and dad may have the ability to go into outer space. The second vision is to create a multi-planet species. We're going back to the moon. In fact, we're going to Mars in the 2030s. And just remember, the dinosaurs, well, the dinosaurs did not have a space program. Mm. There were no dinosaurs here today to watch this historic flight. And maybe that's the reason why there are no more dinosaurs. They did not have a space program. They did not have the ability to go to other worlds. And so there's a new vision emerging from this new space program. It's pretty amazing, um, you know, and these billionaires are pouring their heart and soul into it. You've got people like Elon Musk, Richard Branson, also Jeff Bezos. Um, but some would argue and say, we've got real troubles here at home. These billions of dollars that have been spent um, could be better spent elsewhere. Well, several things can be said. First of all, costs are dropping like a rock. Because of the fact that booster rockets are now reusable, you saw that rocket come right back down again on the planet Earth. Competition has also helped to drive the cost down. And as a consequence, it means that outer space is opening up. Second of all, innovation comes out of the space program, like the microchip. Where did the microchip, the pillar of the world economy, come from? It came from the military and NASA miniaturizing computers to fit inside the lunar capsule. That's why we have miniature chips everywhere in the world today. And some people think that this new burst of innovation will give us artificial intelligence. Mm. For example, that rocket that you saw was fully automatic. No human hands were on the controls, meaning that one day the heavy lifting on the moon, Mars, could be done by robots. And so we're witnessing a new wave of innovation, which then helps to stimulate the economy, because that's where wealth comes from. Wealth does not come from taxes. Taxes only rearranges wealth. Real wealth comes from science and innovation. And we are the leader in that and, and you know, displaying it here as you watch that, uh, the pictures of the rocket launch. And you talk about innovation, you talk about the magnitude of what somebody like Jeff Bezos or, or the others that I mentioned have done here. Um, they've obviously been so successful in other areas of their lives and they're, they're literally essentially shaping the future. And you're right, the reason they're in this country is because this is a country that through capitalism provided them a reward for, for what they do. That's right. In other countries, perhaps a bureaucracy would have smothered, smothered their initiative, taxed them to death, made innovation impossible. But that's where wealth comes from. Wealth does not come necessarily just from taxes or rearranging the chairs on the deck of a sinking ship. No, the Industrial Revolution, the Electric Revolution, the Computer Revolution, all of them were driven by innovators who believed in technology, they believed in harnessing it, and of course they wanted to make a buck in the process, but they changed the world to create the world of today. Look at the wealth around us. It didn't come from nowhere, it just didn't come from somebody printing money or somebody uh, with taxes. No, it came from innovators, pioneers, people with the imagination and the guts to gamble on these technologies. Well, you talk about the guts. Let me ask you, were you surprised that Bezos himself wanted to go up there? I could see what the draw would be. And certainly, you know, he's enamored by this. He's invested in it. At the same time, there, there's a risk, right? And you'd have to think about it as you're buckling that seatbelt. That's right. Historically, the percentage of rocket failure was about 1% of the time. So every time you went into a rocket, there was the 1% chance you wouldn't come back. However, they've tested these rockets numerous times, 15 times for the new Shepard, 
And many of the bets that I've seen show that the probability of a catastrophic accident was perhaps one in a thousand mm. on this New Shepard rocket. Not zero, but down to the point where one day mom and dad will feel emboldened to go into outer space. Well, we're so glad that it went well uh, and that everyone is safe and sound. It surely was something to watch. Michio, thank you so much. Thank you.